Right. I miss it, dude. The formal. I remember the old Mullet. days doing shows that you just had this. Tell who you are. <laughs> I'm Stevie D. What's going on, people? Welcome back to the show. This is my buddy on, on today. He's uh, he's uh, a comedian, an actor, producer, hangs out with famous people. He's slumming today. <laughs> he was out with a little guy last night on the show Mad Men or something. Some little know. TV program, sure. yeah. He's hosted more shows, more game shows than any comic uh, combined, probably. Ah, uh, close. But uh, give it up for my man. Graham Elwood. Hello. Did you see that scary close up? Like, that was like crazy, man. I like it. It's been this. like 92 in LA this week. Oh, God. Like, like, ooh, it's like 80 today. I love ooh. it. I was surfing the other day. Really? 80 degrees out. I'm like, yeah, this is why I moved from Chicago. This will work. And then you get back on the 405 and go, this sucks. I'll take I'm it. I'm out of here. I'll take the 405 <laughs> if I can surf in December, dude. Don't so do it. It's not a bad trade off. Yeah, yeah. My hell is a shot today. Look at that. What's up, CJ? The studio audience today, he's gonna to be laughing over there. Nice. I like how the next guest comes in an hour early, just to just to yeah. support me, give you some love. <laughs> he said, "What? Graham Elwood is here? Yeah, dude, that's I'm what there an hour early." It wasn't that you sent him the wrong email. It's uh, that he no. wanted to come here. Hell he no. To come here early. That's not what happened. <laughs> he showed up. What the hell? I did. I could have come he's here. Like, he's five. texting. Where my agent? Oh, this is nonsense. That's dude. why Stevie doesn't go through agents. This is BS, <laughs> man. He hit me up on Facebook. Come on. <laughs> Come on, my vodcast. It's like getting cornered at a bar. Facebook. I didn't even know what a vodcast was until like two weeks ago. Yeah, I, when you sent it to me, I was like, I don't know what's going on. What's it? Like, who's vodcast? Ham radio? What is he? <laughs> what is he talking about? It's ham radio. It's double wide trailer. Well, that I was. I just thought it was more. You like come check out my meth lab or yeah, whatever you well, got going on. That too, but because that's kind of your bread and butter, that's right? That's my bread and butter. Is vodcast. It? Vodcast. Her he heart. Even, like heart. images that say vodcast. I had oh. a. Jim Michelle Milian on a few weeks ago, and she Jim. showed up like no makeup and like roll them. She's like, ah! Yeah, you got to look. Vibe. Yeah, the girls, you got to. Got to let them know up. that. I mean, I have I, a whole makeup team before I come in. <laughs> Still look like hell. I should have. My face looks like I'm all shiny, like I'm on a three day bender, like I just was drinking at the beach. Well, you were out with famous people last night. There's Jim Michelle. Oh, she is adorable. Do you have a picture of him and his date last night that he put on Facebook? <laughs> So last night you were at uh, on a panel. What's yes. going on with Jazz back here? Ripping up my double wide trailer. That's our mascot. There he is. Hey, that handsome dude. That was doing. Um, that was doing the Doug Benson. His podcast, Doug Loves Movies, his Twelve Guests of Christmas. I was on with John Hamm. If you look there to the right of or left of John Hamm, you okay. see Kevin Pollock's ear. You see okay. Scott Aukerman in the far corner. You have the glasses. Josh Molina checking his phone is is uh, Chris Hardwick. Who's up there? Is that uh, Tom Arnold? Who's back in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Let's say it's Tom. That's, yeah, sure. Tom Let's Arnold Tom. was there. So uh, was that the panel up there last night? Yeah, and we play around. Uh, Doug does this uh, Leonard Malton game, and so we do it once a year. It's a lot of fun. It's a just we're just on stage goofing around, making film jokes and riffing for two hour, two and a half hours. It's just a blast. That show's so much fun. Podcasting that's, is fun. That's not, see, that was, was it. Jo that was totally. Josh Tom Molina Arnold. is going to be so offended. That Did was, you think he well, looks that's like a good <laughs> picture of Tom too? <laughs> That's with Tom's, you know, new hair and everything. He's, he's looking pretty good. Right, right. <laughs> so you and Doug have worked together before. Yeah, we've done it. We've done a bunch of stuff. You know, we go on the road a fair amount of the time, and uh, I, I'm on his podcast, Doug Loves Movies, every once in a while. He's been on our podcast, Comedy Film Nerds. We did a. Um, you were in uh, Super High Me. I was in Super High Me. I'm the Which one. Stoners are like, yeah, that's where I know that. Yeah, dude. yeah. I'm the guy who can't remember boat cucumber wire <laughs> in the movie. I'm like, I don't know, bacon. <laughs> and Doug was like, he doesn't even smoke weed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Contact high, just God, being around Doug. I'm like the one comic that doesn't smoke weed in the history of everything. Two. Yeah. Oh, you? Yeah, I just ate paint chips as a kid, in my excuse. And <laughs> drink moonshine in the bottle. But if you make your own whiskey, that's, yeah, yeah. that's that put counts. you in the same category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we did a movie that just came out earlier called Greatest Movie Ever Rolled, which is basically Doug and I on the road. It's very much an odd couple because I'm like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm, I work out, I'm super healthy, mm -hmm. and Doug like smokes weed and eats bacon wrapped anything. And so it's just uh, he and I on the road just being jackasses, really. It's a blast. Now, I remember in Super Hot Me, but it's been a while since I've seen it. When he stopped smoking, was he, did his material change on stage? Did his act change? Oh, yeah. You know, in Super Hot Me, it was really interesting. They did a lot of tests. They tested that. You know, his act was about the same. I think his just, his energy and focus was a little bit different. They're stuck. They're, they're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is he doing? Is, so he, is that a seance? Oh, yeah. That's us in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Um, these, these women who have this awesome community center and we did a show there 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We do a show. They have Doug Benson Day in Oklahoma City. Do they really? Yeah, the governor made Doug Benson Day or the mayor or something like that. Someone else who yeah. passed those kind of laws. Really. Sure. Yeah, there yeah. Must, they have people smoking weed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Put it that way. There are. <laughs> if you have the license, yeah, there's some a headache. Okay. Oh, yeah, my, yeah, my eyebrows are weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, there you, you go. You need this. <laughs> there's. <laughs> Perfectly normal. That's what I'm on the road with yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that that was a lot of fun, and uh, you know we go on the road sometimes, and then uh, you know I'm you hosted a show together as well, right? Oh, do, uh, on G four, G four. Oh well, yeah, well, actually that was sort of uh, it was called the the high road. That was just really kind of where the idea for greatest movie ever rolled came out. It's just again, Doug and I went to like a little mini two city tour, uh -huh. and just video, you know, just shot what it, that would sort of be like. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then G4 kind of, I don't know, they sort of changed up a little bit, but then uh, Greatest, we just, after doing that, we were like, let's just do a documentary mm -hmm. of, of he and I, and we did it 10 shows in eight cities in eight days. That's what Greatest Movie Ever Rolled is. 10 shows, eight cities, cities eight, eight days. days, okay. And so it's crazy, and we like go on so a- you're like Van Halen, you get up on stage, what's up, Indianapolis? Yeah, we were in, you're in uh, Cincinnati, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's it's if you if people always ask you what's what's being a road comic like I go watch this film you'll see it yeah I mean it's it's it us is. having to do uh, Boom. nice this guy's good man give it up for Matt over there Matty Matt on the ones and twos this is, this is a reality show dude there's no edits there's no retakes I love there's it bam bam there's bam dog bam. running around there's a there's, dog yeah just bit me on there's the there's moonshine hey oh <laughs> God moonshine going sorry. This is a non-alcoholic moonshine. <laughs> so like smoking, you know, if he smoked for a long time, I just thought like maybe there's like a ritual thing before he performs. Every, do you have a ritual before you go up? I kind of stretch out because I yeah, get stiff from all the traveling. And do you really? You yeah. stretch and you go on stage, you do like a tree pose? Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do yeah. yoga. I thought I said you in the green Namaste. room. Namaste. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I'm all about. Because mine is like to chill out, put on some headphones, listen to some Van Halen or something, just go over my set. And then mm -hmm. open a Heineken, just just like a you know like a cigar, just like write my stuff. And then I fold up my little notes, put it in my back pocket. Never once I did comedy 15 years had I ever pulled out. You know I'm not serious. So if, you know I don't have fu money. I can't go on stage with a notebook and be like, <laughs> went to the dentist today. All oh, that sucks. You know it's like, you know right. if I'm at the Laugh Factory somewhere like I had to go on stage and fill the bring it, tub. bring it. You know, but I never. I just had that there as like a security, like a, a crutch. But I never pulled out. I don't even do me. notes anymore. You don't before I, you get your I just, I just, I just get in my head bit. kind of what I want to hit. Yeah. And then I like to kind of play around within that, you know? And then tighten it up and... Yeah, and there's like, if there's something... I'm, I don't know, I do it all in my head. It's weird. I should probably yeah. write down more. <laughs> there's, a, there you go. Ah! there's that pose. <laughs> there's me. That was, that, a, that was a Christmas party in Reno, I think. Nice. Yeah, the comedy filmers. Oh, cool. Yeah. You look a little thin there. Yeah, I don't... And well, oh, there's my album. Oh, First album cover. And then the Palm Strike We're gonna Army. We're going to talk about the Palm Strike. That's, That's a teaser. We're going to come back after oh, the commercial. With I love it. Palm Strike, dude. Look at this. Rich Franklin was talking about your Palm Strike. Rich Franklin. Rich was out here and was doing a project with Rich, and he's like, you know Graham Elwood? He has the best technique for a yellow belt. <laughs> I could be paraphrasing. No, bit. he's awesome. I started this thing on stage. I actually started studying martial arts about eight, nine years ago, and I was a yellow belt, and they gave me like another stripe on it. Mm -hmm. and my, some of my instructors were at a show, and I was For on people that aren't experts in martial arts like us. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've taken a class, but I've seen a lot of Billy Jack. You're, you're, yes. a, you're a self-taught black belt, seen probably. Seen the Dragon 27 sure. times. Sure. So, you know. so explain what a yellow belt, how long does it take to get a yellow belt? Not long at all. It's uh, <laughs> right after white. <laughs> and uh, kick, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, and so I did that on stage, <laughs> and in front of my instructors, I was like, I'm a second degree yellow belt. And they're in the back of the room just howling. <laughs> so I started going, I'm going to maybe just start anyway. doing this and play with it. And then it's become a whole thing. And I palm strike mic stands. Dude. It's a vicious right there. Bam. Does that look like something you Hold want that. you want to oh, taste? Nice. Look you at want a taste of that? There's the yellow belt on screen. CJ, you want some of this? You hungry? Not at all. <laughs> you you hungry at all? I got we I got some real stuff right? in there, man. I got this. Lunch and dinner. And these meals are all you can eat. Nice. So think about that. Woo! Boom. Can you get that on your lens? Do you have that? Yeah, the lens shot, maybe. Yeah, I think your lenses aren't big enough. Yeah, see there you go. Boom. <laughs> My son is five. I'm teaching him to smack talk. I'm like, hey, dude. Is that good parenting, Stevie? Yes, well, that's why the wife is there, deprogramming after he's been with daddy for like 12 hours. 
Uh-huh. So I go, yeah, I teach him to smack talk. We're at the park one day, and this kid, he's playing with these two little brats, and they're playing tag, and he kept tagging the one brat. And the brother's like, you didn't tag me, you didn't tag me. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to play anymore. And the guy's like, yeah, loser, you don't want to play. And the kid had long hair. And say, like, tell me you don't want to play rough with girls. He's like, I don't want to play rough with my dad. He says, not to play rough. I'm not a girl. And then his other friends like, you're a girl. I'm not a girl. Nice. And I, said, I said, ask him if he wants a one-way ticket to Fist City. And then, oh. like, and then, yeah. Where's his dad? His dad doesn't love him. Say that. If his dad loves Oh, much, wow, he's just like, he's crying. <laughs> you're breaking this <laughs> yeah, kid down yeah, in the yeah. park. If your dad loved you, he would be here right now. He's your mom's a ju- right <laughs> your mom's a junkie. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> I'm shooting up. Where's your so yeah, I'm not allowed to alone time with the kids. Yeah, I'm gonna need to have you supervise yeah, a little I was more. On the right track. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like teaching your kid how to smack dog. No, not that much, but you know, the girl line is good. Yeah, knuckle sandwich, knuckle sandwich. My yeah. daughter's three, and she's like the little neighborhood bully. But a little dog, a next door neighbor's dog, tried to bite her, and she's like, "I will wee wee on that dog's head and give it a knuckle sandwich in the bum bum." I'm like, "Easy, easy, <laughs> yeah, easy, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, yeah. Let's dial it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, dial it back." Nice. So you've done how many game shows have you hosted? Well, I hosted uh, strip poker and cram. We did probably over 300 episodes, um, but I think Chris Hardwick has hosted more episodes than I have. Dude, you're better than Chris. Come on. <laughs> no, Chris I is on the bed. I felt like you're so like you're like the Wink Martindale of our generation. <laughs> And Google <laughs> Wink Martindale kids. Because he's a pro. He was smooth. He was. He was pure smooth. I did, did the show Cram on the Game Show Network. And uh, we Chuck Woolery was hosting a show on them at the same two time. Two. That's two and two, baby. And we hung out with him. He was the godfather. It he's was from like, Kentucky, right? Yeah. He's yeah. Homeboy, yeah. Exactly. Y'all, y'all grew up on the same man. <laughs> yeah. You know, same. <laughs> two cousins at a time. <laughs> What? Oh, there's oh, Wink. Man. Look at that hair. Smooth. Perfect. Man. That is what I'm talking about. Wink Bardale. Those guys knew how to hold a microphone, skinny style with that skinny mic. Where'd you get those skinny mic? Those mics skinny mic. The old ones. Oh man. One eyebrow up. Hi guys. Welcome to Stevie D's potluck. We're gonna come up <laughs> with a lightning round just after this, where the prizes and points double. Sorry. Stay tuned. That's, stay tuned. Nice. That's too much game show host. <laughs> Nice. Coming, yeah. What do you think about Drew Carey going from comedy to game show host? God bless and the man. 200 pounds. I mean, Good for him. Game. He loves it. I, he's you know, happy. He's awesome. I mean, the guy's like, I would do what he's doing. He bought a part of a soccer team, the, the Seattle Sounders of the MLS, and he loves soccer. And, and uh, uh, he was and like... He's so humble. He made like $80 million. He's the most the humble dude. He's yeah. a nice, generous guy. I mean, he's uh, he has a like a, a luxury box at the where the LA Galaxy play their mm-hmm. soccer games. Mm-hmm. And I've been in it. He's just like, oh, I'm not using it. Anyone can use it. And I remember talking to him about prices, right? He's like, I wasn't looking to be a game show host, but they just kept offering me money. I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. And now he gets to do all this cool stuff. And he's a really nice guy. He, yeah. he couldn't happen to a nicer dude. And he looks like he's, he's good with the audience. He's having a good time. He probably drives eight blocks to work. And he's having a blast. As, as well you should if you're doing TV. Mm-hmm. You should be having fun. Yeah. You know, especially at that level. I used to see Pat Sajak going into work every day. I used to live over by mm-hmm. CBS, and I'd see him rolling. I'm like, I'm so jealous of that guy. He came from his house, you know. Yeah. Eight blocks away, drove in, did his gig. Boom. Bam. Yep. Shoot days when those are done. Nice. There he is. That's the old Drew. That's the old Drew, then. The old Drew. The old Drew. Stopped at Swingers on his way to work. Yeah. Gets 100 bucks. Oh. Gets like a green protein shake that's not even on the menu. I love that. <laughs> nice. Just whip something off off the back. Yeah, yeah. Just, Drew Carey special. It's not on the menu, basically. It's not on the menu. Secret Got menu. Orf. That's the new Drew. There nice. he is. Lean, mean, game show hosting machine. Look at him. Cool, brother. Should we talk about uh, young Graham? Where are you from, Graham? Uh, I grew up actually in Madison, Wisconsin. Then I moved to Chicago when I was about 11. Okay. Um, so I really identify with the Midwest. And then I went to high school in Chicago and everything. Then went to college at the University of Skip Arizona. Skip the football star part. Though. Oh, I... Captain of the football team in my <laughs> notes. <laughs> So how you like these? The captain of the I forgot. I was captain of the football team. That's <laughs> okay, really helped me out professionally a lot. Um, All right. So, yeah, <laughs> that was my yeah. I played football and uh, and went to college. I played uh, lacrosse in high school and one in freshman year of college at the University of Arizona. Okay. Not a big lacrosse program. No. Um, <laughs> and that, that's in college when I started getting into comedy. I was in a comedy group called Comedy Corner there, and okay. I started doing stand-up at Laughs, and uh, really just 
went from there and then moved back to Chicago and started doing it professionally. It's a tough comedy town, man. It's, you gotta have the chops. We're gonna come back and talk about your comedy, your USO tours, and Afghanistan. You got it, brother. The movie he produced, right? Directed, produced. Directed, produced. And He's got it like that. We'll be back at the CVD show right after this with my man Graham Elwood. Hi. We'll be back. Take him back. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. Her course was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends, and at a cinema department event, we ran into my former classmate, George Lucas, who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch, where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it, and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks, and this is the result. Okay, so what are we gonna do this semester? And we're back, people. That's right. Welcome back to the Stevie D Show. <laughs> Thank you. That's going to be a sound bite. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show business. <laughs> Bing! Nice, kids. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the the podcast festival, which you're very much involved in, with these new kids in your podcast. <laughs> you kids of this digital radio, what's that all about? you of a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have hula hoops on podcasts? <laughs> uh yeah, I co-created the Los Angeles Podcast Festival with, you can see right there, Dave Anthony, nice. uh, Chris Mancini, Chris, and Andy yeah, Wood. Good guy. Uh, the four of us all put that together. We just finished our second year. We had 24 shows the first year. We had 40 shows this past year. Uh, it's really cool. You bring all these podcasts under one roof. We had Mark Marin, we had Doug Benson, we had Aisha Tyler, Greg Fitzsimmons, a bunch of other, okay. Jimmy Pardo. Um, and uh, put them all under one roof. And all these, you know, podcast fans are like some of the most loyal awesome fans out there and so we just wanted to give them like a party basically like all oh, see cool. all your favorite shows under one roof kind of like a music festival uh -huh. that's cool and then you know like you go to a music festival like oh here's the drummer from this band yeah, sitting yeah. And all and so it's like if you go to nam or something and right. you go in like a little booth and listen to you know it's awesome and so like you know aisha is a guest on this podcast and paul gilmartin does that one and it was just like it was so much fun we've done it two years in a row and uh, it's it's like the last week in September uh, this coming up. Okay. So we're going to announce. How many have you done? Two. Two, okay. So this will be our third, and we should be announcing the actual dates and put tickets on sale very soon. Right on, so, buddy. Yeah. Have a little podcast section. Though. We will. Oh, look at that. No. <laughs> I'm still on the air, Steve buddy. Steve everybody. <laughs> Kevin, I'm the podcast Crazy. festival. Easy. <laughs> so these podcasts, man. The, I mean, sorry, the podcast. Like, Mark Maron's killing it. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing very well. Corolla, Aisha, mm -hmm. Joe um, Rogan, Chris Rogan, Hardwick, yeah, yeah, Joe Rogan experience, Comedy Bang Bang. I mean, yeah. like so many shows, uh, they're they're like Comedy Bang Bang and, and Mark <clears throat> Maron. They both got shows on I, IFC. Uh -huh. uh, Jimmy Pardo was done a lot. He just did the Podcastathon where he raised one hundred and forty thousand dollars for nice. Smile Train. It's just podcasting is just really cool. It's such yeah. a brand new medium, and it's such an amazing way to connect with the fans better than any other way that mm -hmm. you ever could in fact it feels it, more intimate it's so right. intimate because they're, they're listening to you and and the podcaster you know you're just plugging a microphone into a laptop and mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. and and all these comedians are talking really honestly mm -hmm. about who they are mm -hmm. and, doing their no no it's yeah. not like it's yeah. not like being on panel on, yeah. on a late night show yeah. or whatever so you're getting the, the real the real deal uh -huh. and you know we actually shot a lot of interviews at this last uh, spe festival and decided like we should maybe raise money and do a, a documentary about it yeah 
So we're going to be announcing very shortly a Kickstarter campaign uh, called, I think the movie's going to be called Earbuds, the podcast documentary. Mm -hmm. Ding! So as soon as I get that uh, info, I'll get it over to you. But it, uh, Cool, it's, yeah. And, and it's, again, we'll Kickstarter's great because the fans can be in, help get the project yeah. made. Kickstarter is how we got the money to do the first year of the festival. Really? And it's, it's just a perfect fit because... The fans are so involved in podcasting. They email you on Twitter and Facebook. Very and loyal. They they so retweet. loyal. Retweet. They yeah. do. And they give you suggestions. Oh, you should do this on your show mm -hmm. or that on your show. And, yeah. and, and, it, and so many fans have come up and said, oh, my God, your podcast got me through this tough thing in my life. Yeah. Uh, and so we really want to show what, what it means to the fans mm -hmm. and what it means to the podcasters. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mark Maron, it, he was couldn't get work and all this yeah. stuff and then all of a sudden here here he is because he just went on and was honest mm -hmm. and interviewed people honestly you know and he's got a long podcast yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's a, a regiment i don't know if it's 115 or it's over an hour mm -hmm. most of his podcast that's right. a long time uh -huh. and he says he doesn't prepare much no. not that i prepare at all but uh, you know <laughs> that's why i have my friends on i know a little something about you enough to wing it but you but know like, what i think i think that's a good format though yeah because it is like I mean, this is... This you want it more organic. Yeah. I want it to be, if we screw up, if I get the information wrong, I'm expected to get information wrong. Fine. I'm not that smart to begin with, you know, <laughs> but, but the thing about Marin that I like is he goes nuts, like, he's so involved in his Twitter, and he'll tweet, uh -huh. and if anybody, like, bashes on him, and it's usually people in their basement that live with their yeah. mom, that are haters, he can have a couple million fans, but if a couple of people just, he, like, starts right. a war, and he says that drives him effing nuts, because... I wonder if it is because you feel more intimate with your audience, you feel closer, and it's, it hits you in the heart a little more. It does, and then sometimes the fans defend you. It's yeah, a, and then they go after that dude. And it's, it's amazing to, to watch. You know, or woman, it's probably we a woman. Had, um, you know, We have one of our fans for comedy film nerds is this, this woman, Sanai Narita, and she lives in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about her on the show. You know, like We mispronounce her name, Sandy. We call her <laughs> big fan Japan and yeah. all this stuff. So... so other fans, you know, like know who she is, and they've all they all have all talked on Twitter and Facebook. And so when the the earthquake and the tsunami hit Japan, all of our fans were on Twitter asking, mm -hmm. "Is she okay? Are oh, you okay?" Cool. Yeah. And and that was just an amazing thing. And we 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 you know we talked on the show. You know, our hearts go out to you, and we hope you're mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And and t she wrote sent this. Was she email like silent for a period. She was you silent know? for yeah, like, yeah. just because everything was shut down. But mm -hmm. then she finally sent us an email and how much it meant to her, and it was just like. We had created this community, mm -hmm. and I don't know any other medium that's ever done it that way. Yeah, you know, we're taking control now. Whereas Complete before, man. you're at the mercy of the industry and what you could say on the show, mm -hmm. and they could, you know, right before you're about to go on, they could, you know, go over your joke and have you tweak it or whatever. But you, you can be honest, and you don't have to feel the need to do your shtick, you know. You can say whatever you want, and you know we've gotten sponsors like Squarespace is. Uh, my is that a sponsor? That is a sponsor. My sponsor's on my shirt. I'm about Shazam. to tell you. Shazam! So Squarespace. Squarespace. Yeah, so if you go to squarespace.com/slash Graham Elwood, and, okay. and use coupon code you just Graham made twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but it, let me cut. It's a, well, cut it out. Let but, me but, Heineken. <laughs> but they like even the sponsorship has is unique and different, and mm -hmm. we don't read ad copy on the show. Yeah. We talk about. Like this is a company where you can design a website, mm -hmm. you know, and so this is uh, is something we liked and wanted to use, and they approached us to be in the festival, mm -hmm. and I approached them and said, let's do something together, and now yeah. they're working, they're going to be working with mm -hmm. comedy film nerds, and it's really cool because it's it's you know it's not just like you know tied or yeah, whatever, yeah, it's yeah. it's like something our fans obviously if you if you watch vodcasts or listen to podcasts. You're technically pretty savvy, probably. Mm -hmm. You're you're on the internet. You know how to use your smartphone. So you might even have your own digital company or need a website or something like mm -hmm. that. So it's like, why not, why not get them in there? Like yeah. you could do one about what happened to your mullet and where yeah. to go. Where's yeah. where's StevieD'smullet.com? That's there's you know, a website. Yeah. Where's StevieD'smullet.com? <laughs> how much time do we have? There's <laughs> Afghanistan. See, one thing that bugged me about the Stern and all those when I got serious. XM was like they talked everybody into buying these devices, commercial free, and then they'd sneak in one commercial, two commercial, but before you know it, you know, you're listening to seven minutes of content, right. then three or four minutes of a commercial, and I'm on the 405, so then I went, listen, now I only listen to podcasts and traffic. Right. You know, I don't mind if Mark Marin or somebody does everything up front. Right. Do your five minutes, whatever you got to do, pay your bills, dude, and then get to the content. Get into it. Get, into, get it. into it. Let's get it on. And I think that the other thing, too, like, like again, reading unique. Unique stuff is 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 is, is helpful. So, 
Um, how much time? Sorry, how much time do we have, Pepper? We've got five minutes. Can I show? Can I show my little clip? Yeah. Why don't we do this first? All right. Speaking of Palm Strike, one of my idols passed away recently. Uh, uh, you know, everybody's idol should be every man. And it was an icon. Taught us how to live. Matt, can you roll that? Billy Jack. Billy Jack, right there, baby. He. Tom Laughlin, R.I.P. Brother. Is it gonna roll or not? It's okay if it doesn't, because. We can pretty much bring oh, CJ up here, and he's a stunt man, and let me kick him in the face. I don't think I can get that high, but if he gets on his knees, and I stretch a little oh, bit. Billy Jack. We know what this is. See what happens. Graham, you know it? Yeah. See, this, this, this sheriff was a jerk, right? Right. And Billy on the reservation with the kids had their own little gig, man. Hey, man. They didn't live by the man's rules. They live on the reservation, bro. That's about community on exactly. the reservation, not so about... So this redneck sheriff didn't like that. So he, he opened about... Uh, 50 man team deep of whoop ass right here. Well. And Billy says, okay, it's going, it's going to be like that. So you don't even need dialogue. No, man. I, I know exactly what's going that on. That guy's the first one to get it. I know It'll that right Billy's going to get one in the mouth. <laughs> Billy's going to get one. <laughs> That's right what I know. Right into huevos. Oh, look at Watch this. Oh, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, look for the strongest one. Here comes one. the redneck. Here comes uh, Sheriff Lobo, whatever his name was. Look for the strongest one, Billy Jack. What you gonna do now, Billy Jack? Yeah. With your fancy green braid karate moves? What we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> Pretty much. It's that the same was hot, guy. Yeah. actually. It's the same guy. Look so at that hat! Oh. Look at that hat! You think you would have taken the hat oh, off before you opened a can of whoop ass. God. It's a guy pretty much saying, Billy, we're about to beat hell out of you. Yeah. And he said, Well, that's cool. So I got no choice. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, take this right foot. And uh, yeah. look at, look at that, dude. Oh, look at that confidence. What's this? Foot, and I'm gonna put it. And right you're so up. badass. He yeah. said "wop," which is not even a tough word, but he yeah. says I'm gonna wop you about right there. Right. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I know. Not a damn thing. You <laughs> see that? <laughs> not, a, not a damn thing. That's is that bold. right, Billy Jack. Yeah, that is. That's right. Yeah, I know it's right. Whoa! Oh! All right, all right. We don't need to see Billy getting his butt kicked. No. Kick his butt. Yeah, and then he just starts see taking the reservation his... in the sky, yeah. Billy Jack. Oh God! And That's then he all just right. Start throttling, right. dudes. Okay, mission accomplished. R.I.P. Tom Laughlin. All right, brother, show him the palm strike. Ba boom. Can we uh, pull up his websites real quick? Yep. You, you go to uh, GrahamElwood.com, guys. All my tour dates. I travel all over the country. Uh, you can buy my CD right there, Graham Elwood's Palm Strike Dance Party Clips. And there's a link to Comedy Film Nerds on the right. Merchandise, my Palm Strike shirts. There's Comedy Film Nerds. Listen to the podcast. We have movie reviews. We have an online store. We sell Afghanistan, a documentary that I directed Did and produced uh, about my first ever USO tour to uh, Afghanistan. Um, so check that out. This is available as a pay what you think is fair download of comedy filmers. There's my Twitter Whoa. at Graham Elwood. We're all over you, dude. That's right. You guys are on it. Oh my God! Wow. There's my Facebook fan page. Oh, how'd you do that? Hi, Hi Shazam. Nice. You like that? IMDb. Super high me down there. How about you? my? Oh yeah, I have, a, I have a YouTube channel where I put a lot of uh, subscribe to YouTube. I got a lot of funny videos on there. There's Left Ganson. You can like that page. And we are back. All right, let's take him on out, buddy. Thanks for uh, Steve, stopping thank so by, much, man. Buddy. And uh, let's give him a palm strike. How do we do it? <laughs> Stevie D Show. See you next time. CJ, you ready to rock?